the culprit. Yeah. And stick a couple fingers in there. Jeez. <laughs> so, that's, that's not good. Okay, so a little over a week ago, we posted this photo and we had a bunch of people wonder what in the world did we do to our truck? And then they also asked us a lot of questions about our favorite Overland jacks and the pros and cons of each. So we're covering both of those questions today. Should be a good time. Check it out. Okay, so about a week ago, me and a friend went out and we hit this trail. Uh, we were actually just out there to test a drone. We weren't planning on doing anything crazy. And then we managed to rip a giant hole in the side of our 37 inch tire uh, in a really precarious situation, actually. We were up on this, uh, there was a challenge hill that's kind of like a dirt bike hill that people like to drive up to the top. Uh, you know, some Jeeps do it. Um, so we decided, ah, what the heck, let's, let's go up there. There's only one way up and one way down. Uh, so we kind of floored it, uh, took a little advantage of our supercharger. I mean, that's what it's there for, right? Uh, so we flew up the hill, no problems, turned around to head back down the same hill. And then right as we were turning into it in the most precarious situation where you're about to like tip your way into a really steep decline, uh, our front tire that had all the weight on it was in a rut and the whole thing just blew out on us. Um, so we were stuck there kind of hanging on the, the hill. Um, we had our rear tires were pretty close to the top of the hill still. So we managed to actually back it up and kind of be stuck up on top of this very narrow spine that's not level. Um, and at that point, that's where your uh, field maintenance practice comes in handy. So we were able to pull out our jack, uh, get that tire off. Uh, <laughs> This is probably very bad practice, but um, our spare tire uh, was flat. Um, it had a screw in it, uh, but we, I, I always carry a patch kit. So we were able to just patch that in about five minutes, um, air that up with a compressor, stick it back on the vehicle and get back down off the mountain. Uh, so it was a fun little adventure, but because of that and some of the pictures we posted, uh, we got a ton of questions on jacks. So we're gonna jump into a couple different types of jacks. We're gonna run through the pros and cons on them really quick, and hopefully you can learn something from this. So the scissor jack. Um, these come in a lot of vehicles as the stock jack, a lot of times more in cars and sometimes in small pickup trucks. Um, a scissor jack I think is the least useful because if you're overlending, it's traditionally not gonna go high enough to actually get your tires off the ground. Um, a lot of people go, whoa, 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 you can just bring you know, four by four block of wood that you stack underneath of it and then it will work. Well, the problem with the scissor jack is already a precarious jack with not a very big base plate. Um, if you're on uneven ground, that thing's already a little bit sketchy. And now when you're just starting to stack wooden blocks on top of each other to get more height out of it, um, it's definitely not the best system. Also, it's not that useful for other things. Um, I'll have some people say, yeah, you can use it as a press, but it's an awkward press. A bottle jack works much better as a press. So if you're bringing uh, like a stock jack that you're keeping in your vehicle and you're hauling that weight around anyway, um, and it's not useful for your main jack and you're keeping it for tools, then go get a bottle jack, uh, which leads us to the second category, bottle jacks. Um, with my Tundra, that's what comes stock with the vehicle is a bottle jack. Now with the lift on it and the tires that I have on it, my car, my truck is too tall to, for that bottle jack to be useful. Again, you can stack wood, stack rocks, things like that to get it tall enough. And in a total pickle, um, it can save your butt, but that is not the, the best and safest way to lift a vehicle with huge tires and, and a lift. So um, the, the, the reason I do actually recommend keeping your bottle jack in your vehicle, if you can manage the weight and the room, is the aftermarket ones a lot of times have a hydraulic head that will extend farther than the factory ones. And then a lot of times, even on the end, it will have a little part that screws out that can get you additional height. Um, and you can get different weights. So you can get a four ton, you can get a two ton, you can get a 40 ton bottle jack. The beautiful thing about a bottle jack is when you break something or bend something underneath your vehicle, and a lot of times it's hard to get to, or, or you need to take a part off and bend it back um, a bottle jack can be a press for you in a lot of interesting ways. I've been able to use bottle jacks to straighten things, um, bend things, press things back into position that 
I'm not strong enough to and I don't want to just sit there and hit it with a hammer. Um, so yeah, a bottle jack is useful in other things than just being a jack. So if you happen to have one around um, and it still can fit in your vehicle, I'd keep it and just remember that it's there for weird bush mechanic situations. Let's jump into some of the ones that are actually made for overlanding and off-roading. This is an odd one that we'll at least cover really quick because it does have some pretty cool uses. Let's talk about exhaust jacks. An exhaust jack is pretty popular over in Australia. Uh, you don't actually, I don't see people using them very much in the US, but an exhaust jack literally is exactly like it sounds. It plugs into your exhaust. It has a bladder that blows up and you put that bladder underneath your car and as it blows up, it will actually lift your car off the ground. If you check those out, they're pretty cool. The main use for them, I think, is when you're in really soft dirt or even in snow, actually, in some cases, because they, they pack down super flat because it's just a bag. So there's no big metal pieces, right? So you can slide it under certain areas of your car really easily. Then you air it up. Think about when you get bogged in the sand, if you're off-roading, even if you have your tires aired down, these type of jacks are really easy to throw under the, the rear of the vehicle or the front, lift both your tires off the ground, be able to slide your max tracks under, get going again and get out of there. They are super light though and they do pack down small so they might be worth checking out depending on the train that you off-road in and, and where you plan on going. Okay so next Jack let's talk about the Pro Eagle. The Pro Eagle has become pretty popular lately um, and I think that it really is because it's a very safe jack to work with. Um, it's modeled after a normal mechanics jack so if you have to get a jack for your shop you need a mechanics jack for your shop and then you also happen to want an off-road jack kill two birds with one stone, get a Pro Eagle. Um, it's gonna have that really long base. You got the wheels in the front and the wheels in the rear. So even if you're on sand, um, the wheels just sink into the sand a little bit. It sits on that flat bottom. You got a huge stable base to lift your vehicle off of. It's just a really comforting jack to be working on, and especially in precarious situations. When we blew up our tire on that hill where it was uneven, we had both a Pro Eagle or a high lift jack to work with. Um, we grabbed the Pro Eagle, we jacked the truck up off the cross member, which I wouldn't have been able to reach um, with a, a high lift jack. And it was perfect because it was the most stable flat area to jack the, the truck off of. For the Pro Eagle, it was a super stable jack for us to slide under there, get the vehicle off the ground, get the tire off, and go to work. So the, that is the pro of the Pro Eagle, is stability. It's not as much a multi-tool. I mean, I've seen people that literally blew up and broke a rim and didn't have a spare. Uh, I've seen commercials where they literally just strap a Pro Eagle to the axle and drive out on a Pro Eagle. So I guess that's kind of a multi-tool. I feel like that's kind of a last resort. I mean, one step above the whole old school tie a tree to the bottom of your axle and just drag it out. But uh, yeah, I guess that's that's a multi-use of the, of the Pro Eagle. But yeah, to me, a Pro Eagle is about 400 bucks, which is about three to four times the cost of a high lift jack. For me, if you don't already own a mechanics jack for your shop, that's what makes it worth it. You'll love the stability on them, the ease of use. It, it's, it's, it's so many ways, it's kind of just a, almost a dummy proof jack. I still recommend if you get one to practice with it on uneven ground and at your house and in your driveway before you have to pull it out in an emergency on the road. I really like these. The price point I think is correct for them because they are really high quality and, and super functional. You're definitely gonna have to have a way to mount them. They sell mounts, they're expensive as well, but it's a pretty cool jack to have. Let's jump from that over to the old school Swiss Army knife. It was like invented in the early 1900s, I think, the high lift jack. Now, the knock on the high lift jack is everybody says, oh, the high lift jack is dangerous. And that's true. Kind of like a car, a vehicle is dangerous if you don't know how to use it, right? With the high lift jack, you should be practicing long before you ever need to use it in an emergency. And there's just simple things that people don't realize when they get their car, they lift it, they stick the big tires on it, they strap their high lift jack onto the side of their bed, and then they just think, wow, I look so cool, I'm ready to go and be an overlander, but they've never used it before. When they start using it, they start to understand the predicament of your vehicle goes straight like this. As you jack it from your jack point right here, it moves in an arch, an arc. As it moves in an arc and goes higher, it goes farther away from where you started. 
So there's all these predicaments that you need to get used to with using a high lift jack. As you go higher and higher, it shifts away and the jack starts to lean one way or lean the other way or, or slide along your slider left and right depending on the weight distribution, right? All these things can be dangerous and can kill you if you actually get under that vehicle with nothing else there to stop it if it falls. Here's the reason why if I could only have one jack with me on a solo trip where I had you know, going hundreds of miles away from humans, and it's my job to get out of there on my own. If I can only carry one jack, I would still take a high lift jack. The reason is, it is a Swiss Army knife. I can use it to jack up my vehicle safely from the front, rear, all the different sides. Um, I can use straps on it if I can't actually get it to connect into a certain point. I can use chains with it. Um, but, here's the thing. If my winch breaks, I can use a high lift jack as a winch and I can winch my vehicle effectively with it. I'll leave links below to all the different jacks that we're talking about, but there's a high lift jack that's called a like high lift extreme jack. And the only real difference is it comes with an attachment on the top to where instead of just having that one tooth that you're they're jacking your vehicle up, it has a second one. So you can kind of use it a little bit as a press sometimes. Uh, you can use it for winching. That same hook on the top also has a, hook, uh, a thing for dropping a large chain through and being able to use it to winch um, with. So there's, there's a thousand different uses that I've seen high lift jacks done in bush mechanics to be able to get in and get out and, and you're able to be a lot more creative with those than, than most other types of jacks. So that's why if, if you only can take one, uh, cause you know, Pro Eagle is heavy. Uh, so is a uh, high lift jack. If you don't have room for both, if you could only take one, I'd take, I'd take a high lift. Um, not because it's the easiest, because it's the most versatile. Um, so let's also cover a couple other things. There's variations on high lift jacks. So ARB uh, made one, it's like a hydraulic jack. In fact, it's actually called jack. Um, and then so did Kings. Um, the thing that you're gonna notice with those is what they were trying to do is take the functionality of a high lift jack just for raising and lowering a vehicle, make it easier, make it more dummy proof, make it safer, right? Which they achieved with both of those. The problem is all the other uses are eliminated. The ARB hydraulic jack is a $800 jack. So props to them on making a safer version of a high lift jack, but I can't spend eight times the money for something that's gonna go in my bag and I'm still gonna feel like I need other tools with me to handle some of the other situations, right? The one other thing I was gonna show on the quick, on the end of this video that I do think is really important, you need to have a patch kit for your tires. If you end up getting holes in more than one tire, uh, you can still be left stranded. So I have links to tire patch kits down below and then I also have a quick montage here that shows how easy it actually is to patch a tire. When you're patching a tire, there's two different tools that you're gonna use to, to stab into the tire. You'll see in the video right behind me actually. Um, when you're using those, a lot of people have a tendency to try to wiggle them around um, a little too much and they end up bending them or even breaking them off, especially the one that you use to stuff in the actual patch uh, for your tire. Um, if, you, if you twist that one at the wrong point in time, you'll just break the teeth off on the bottom um, that are actually holding that plug and then you'll be left with a patch kit that's really not useful. So it's a good thing, it's another thing like everything else. Practice it at home before you actually have to do it on the road. Um, there are other types of jacks out there that I know people have used. If you have a favorite that I did not mention in this video so far, I would love for you to call it out below. Anyhow, thanks for tuning in. Uh, come back here next week for more helpful tips on overlanding. Talk to you guys later, bye.